Richard, time travel populates fiction, common conversation. Everybody likes to talk about it. But in reality, it's, it's an important probe of what may be ultimate reality. Because if there is or is not time travel, it will really tell us something fundamental about what it's all about. So how can we begin to look at the physics of time travel? Well, in his theory of special relativity in 1905, Einstein showed that time travel to the future is possible. He showed that moving clocks tick slowly. So if you want to visit the Earth yeah. in the year 3000, all you need is a fast spaceship. Yeah. So you just go at 99.995% the speed of light out yeah. to a star 500 light years away, turn around and come back at the same speed, and when you get back, the Earth will be in the year 3000, 1,000 years later, but you will have only aged 10 years. So this is how you can visit the future. And indeed, our greatest time traveler so far is <laughs> Sergei Krikalov, who has traveled 1 48th of a second <laughs> to the future by or his m numerous orbital missions around the Earth. Now, obviously, this has to be enormously faster, a very, very high fraction of the speed of light, but we accelerate particles to That's that right. speed today in we our... Have, we have protons going yeah. this fast. Uh. It's just a matter of money <laughs> and engineering. Yeah. NASA, take note. <laughs> it's expensive, but possible in principle, we know for sure. Okay. Now, what about time travel to the past? That sounds much more complicated. That sounds more difficult. Um, there's a poem. There was a young lady named Bright. She traveled far faster than light. She left one day in a relative way, but returned, returned the, the previous, previous night. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you could go faster than the speed of light from special relativity, we know that theoretically you could go back in time. However, Einstein showed that you couldn't build a rocket that would go faster than the speed of light. You could build one that would go very close to the speed of light, but not faster. But... In 1915, his theory of general relativity showed that there was curved space-time. Mm -hmm. This explained gravity. And in curved space-time, you can have a shortcut where you can beat a light beam to a destination. And this opens the door to having time travel to the past. Um, I found a solution involving cosmic strings. I, I brought a couple. <laughs> cosmic strings are dense threads of energy left over from the very early universe. They're predicted in about half the theories of particle physics. We're looking for them today. We haven't found them. But the cosmic string, the geometry around a cosmic string, you might think it would look like a piece of paper, flat piece of paper with a, with a point in the middle where the string went through. Mm -hmm. But actually, it looks like a, a pizza with a slice missing. <laughs> uh, and this is fold it up here together, it makes a cone. So there's oh, a conical oh, oh, geometry. Oh, 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 oh. And the circumference of this circle is not quite 2 pi times mm -hmm, the radius mm -hmm. of the circle. And it means that if we have a, a, a quasar here, uh, there are two light paths that can come to the Earth. These are straight. I've drawn them with a ruler. They're mm -hmm. as straight as you can go, but mm -hmm. they're two separate paths. So we'd see two images of a distant quasar. This is one of the ways we're actually looking quasar for Quasar being strength. something... Uh, very distant, very, very behind distant. the string. Right. So a quasar behind the string, you could see two images of that quasar. And there are two light paths that, that would go, and one of them, in general, can be shorter than the other one. And the exact, this one's about a sixteenth of an inch shorter. Mm -hmm. So if I got on a spaceship and I traveled along this path at 99.999% of the speed of light, I actually, could actually beat a light beam going this way. And when I got here, I'd look back at the quasar and I'd see myself preparing to leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, I later showed that if you had two cosmic strings, two moving cosmic strings, and then they, the two cosmic strings have a geometry around them that has two missing slices. So this would look, this would look like this. There'd be two missing slices mm -hmm. here. And this is folded up. This is folded up, looks like a, looks like a little boat. Mm. This is what the geometry of space-time around those two cosmic strings would look like. So if I was on planet A, I could go to planet B along this path, mm. which is shorter than the light path yeah. going right through the middle, and I could beat a light beam to planet B. I could beat it. In other words, there would be more, between my arrival here and my departure here, there would be more distance in space 
than years in time, more light years in space than years in time. And in special relativity, it was shown that if a moving observer, if that's true, if you could beat a light beam from here to here, then an observer standing here but moving would say that those two events are simultaneous if he was moving fast mm -hmm. enough. So that means that an observer moving here would could see my departure from planet A and my arrival at planet B as simultaneous <laughs> events. He could see me leave planet A at noon and, and arrive at planet B at noon. And so then what I showed was if I had two cosmic strings and they were moving relative to each other, mm. if they were moving like this, if they were passing each other like this, if they were passing each mm -hmm. other like this, then um, moving in one string moving in this direction and one string moving in that direction, what I could do is I could come here from planet A at noon, arrive at planet B at noon, and then come back along this other shortcut uh -huh. from, and, and do the same trick in the other direction where I left planet B at noon and arrived back at planet A at noon. And arrived before you left. Well, just when I left, so I could shake hands with myself. That's an event I remember from my own past. I've left planet A, gone around these two cosmic strings, and come back to see an event in my own past. I'd say, hello, I've been around the strings. So um, that's time travel to the past. And uh, it's one of the solutions in general relativity that allows this. Another one is the wormhole solution, where you take a shortcut to a distant place through a wormhole. And you can also visit the past there. So either this cosmic string solution or the wormhole solution. The very first one was found by Kurt Gerdel in 1949, mm. a whole rotating universe that had time travel to the past. So what's occurring here is that if this is space-time, and this is time going this way, space this way, your, your path through time like this, this is your world line, yes. your path through time, you're going toward the future always. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what can happen here is that the space-time is sufficiently twisted so that you, while going toward the future all the time, yet circle back and visit an event in your own past. So this is just like Magellan's crew. They left Europe, they went west, 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 around the world, and then they came back to Europe again. So the time traveler, Circling the cosmic strings is going toward the future, toward the future, toward the future, but yet comes back and visits an event. And this would be caused past. by the curvature of space time. Yes. And uh, how far back can you go, theoretically, on, on these models? Well, it depends on how far the strings are apart and so forth. Um, uh, given the right conditions, you could go arbitrarily far back. Arbitrarily. Um, if, the, if, if you're not lucky enough to find two infinite strings, strings come in two varieties. They have no ends. So either they're, <laughs> they're, they're infinite in length or they're in loops. So think spaghetti and spaghetti-os. <laughs> so uh, if you're not lucky enough to find two cosmic, infinite cosmic strings passing each other at the right speed, you can always take a loop of cosmic string that you find manipulate it by flying massive spaceships around it, so you cause it to contract by a large factor, and the sides of the strings will pass each other uh -huh. at a speed fast <laughs> enough to make a time machine, Close, slower than the speed of light, but still fast enough to make a time machine. And then I showed that this would be sufficiently compact that, that the time travel region would be likely hidden inside a black hole. Uh -huh. So, um, you're, uh, the, you're, you're coming in here, and a black hole solution would look like this. It sort of looks like a big funnel. And, you know, if you go in a black hole, um, it's a, here's an astronaut here. Um, it's like a hotel where, um, where you check in, but you, you don't check out. So you go in like this. So um, the, if you were lucky, you could do the time travel inside the black hole, uh, but you're never getting back out to brag to your friends about it. And never telling anybody about it. it. Never telling anybody about it. You, you, if you're real lucky, you might pop out in another universe after doing the time travel. That's or, very speculative. That's speculative. You could die in a singularity. You could die hitting a singularity before you do the time travel. And whether or not you could do the time travel inside the black hole, 
we may need to understand the laws of quantum gravity. We know how gravity behaves on macroscopic scales. Mm -hmm. That's general relativity, and it's been tested many times. And these solutions are solutions in general relativity. So they make time travel look possible in principle. But we may need to understand the laws of gravity at microscopic scales, which is quantum gravity, mm. to understand whether we could realize these time travel solutions inside the black hole. So at the end of the day, how important is the concept of time travel to help us understand the nature of reality? Well, time travel seems to be possible in the theory of general relativity. It's our best theory of gravity. So we're interested. So the laws of physics, as we understand them today, seem to allow time travel solutions. And the question we're asking ourselves is, will we discover new laws of physics in the future that will somehow stop it? So we're, we're probing the boundaries of the laws of physics under extreme situations, which may give us clues as to how they work.